Okay, so today we've got the pleasure of welcoming Birmingham Celtic Metal Band Tours to the Billy B Studio. Well, two-thirds at least. And so a warm welcome to Mark Malone and GMT, or George as he's known to his mates. Welcome guys. You alright mate, thanks for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. Always a pleasure to have you guys in the studio. We last spoke in December last year, just after the theft of all of your uh, equipment. Has it been easy recovering from such an event, and did the hookup with Holy Than Their Records soften the blow somewhat? Well, it's a bit of a you know crap time, obviously. You don't really expect something like that to happen when it does happen, especially at the time when you feel like you're on a bit of a roll. Things are going pretty well, um, but yeah, of course that side. And thanks for everyone who did help us out at the time. Yeah, Holy Than That's been great. I mean, it's a it's a whole like different chapter of the band now. It's sort of the end of the beginning, to a degree. Um, and it definitely brought in a new area of tourists, I think. Yeah, we got a lot of help from all local bands all over the Midlands for that, which is much appreciated. And the Holy of Nothings came up and just sort of kept everything rolling on. Mm -hmm. yeah, Has it nice. restored your faith in uh, human nature and people generally? Or? Certain humans and certain parts of nature, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, I think more than anything, it just it showed the, the, the passion we have for this band uh, and how... You, you can't let certain things affect you no matter how bad it is at the time and it was um, and I think Holy Now came in at a good time when we had the right things to go with and that's good and it helped us a lot that's cool and, and courtesy of those guys as well you, you had a, a June single release God Game Suicide and that received a great response um, consequently you're at the, currently at the start of a, a mini tour entitled strangely the God Game Suicide tour um, mm. What are your expectations for this tour, generally? I don't know. It's, it's always hard to know what to expect for a tour, isn't it? Because you know, you don't, you, you, you do the tour, you do the shows. We always obviously have this thing where we're continually growing. We're really grateful that every time we do a show, people tell people that, that was good. I'm going to go see that again, or I want to bring people to see it next time. Uh, and yeah, we've, we get messages from people in other cities that we've never been to saying, why don't you come here? And when we're going there, before we've even done it, some people say we're looking forward to seeing it and it's great. So I'm hoping and we're anticipating that this will be the best run yet. And there's no reason to see why it won't be. Uh, having said that, all you can ever do is plan for it, do your best. And we've got a really good show, good set lined up. So I think it'll be the best one yet. Cool, cool. Well... We wish you great success with it, and I'm sure we'll be there a couple of them for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that support. A little birdie, however, tells me that you're now working on your next single release. We are. Ah. Can you tell us anything about that? And uh, is there any release date in mind at the moment? Uh, well, the song's called Colours, um, which we've been working on for, for a couple of months now. Uh, something that... I think it's really, really cool because it's a completely different direction to things that we've done before. Uh, it's a lot, it's a little bit more vocally led. It's still got this, the sort of sound, it's still got that rawness, still got these different chops and changes that people expect. But a little bit more following in from God Game Suicide, it's a bit more of a, a direct sound. You know, we put out our first EP, Dry Bones, what, last June? Some of the songs like eight minute, like progressive yeah. metal tunes. And yeah. this is a little bit more like God Game Suicide where it still sounds like the band, but it's very direct in its sound. Okay. Um, and a lot more vocally led, I'd say. Would you agree, I think? Yeah, it's definitely a lot different to all the other stuff we put out previously. Mm. So are are, are, are you aiming to go for the shorter type, uh, hit in the face, punchy type songs and those that did go on sort of more epic, I uh, think it's tunes. a mix of both. Yeah. So you want like a few of the shorter ones, hard hitting, and then you want you know, more like the journey type songs, take you for ages to finish. Pretty much, yeah. I think because the way that we work is <clears throat> our sound is quite open anyway. So you, we don't really typecast our sound in that way. Obviously, the Celtic element is the only part that's very like mm -hmm. specific. Yeah, for sure. But all the other parts are very quite open and, and, and it can go anywhere. And that's the beauty of when you listen to a tourist song. You never really know where it's going to go until it's finished. <laughs> um, and I think with, with this song particularly, what I'm really proud of, it, the, the lyrical content is some of the best that I've ever written because Colours is a is a metaphor for people's perspective because colours you've got a prism I mean, you've got like a spectrum Absolutely. of colours so when somebody says my mentality my belief is like red well somebody else's is blue somebody else's is yellow so the whole point in colours is you've got a spectrum of truth it's not just one defined version of truth your red or your blue might be that and that's great but 
there's so many different colors. So the whole point in this song is it's about, I guess it's just about a testament to not just concentrating on the red or the blue, you know, and looking at the whole spectrum as a spectrum and appreciating that and learning from it. And that's what the song's about. And I'm really proud of how it's come together. It's like, it doesn't sound like any of the songs, but very, very happy with it, I think so far. The release date, we have to wait for the label to tell us, but it will be late September from the looks of it at the moment. Okay, was it a, a joint effort, the song, or was it led by yourself? You know, did, did George have an input musically, lyrically, or did, did Tom have a, an input musically? Or well, we lyrically? always have a bit of a, a mix, don't we? In terms of like, obviously I tend to bring like the, the, the meat and potatoes in terms of the bare bones of the song. But okay. usually when, if I write something at home, like I did with Colours, where I came up with this idea, it doesn't sound like the finished idea. So it's not like the song is as people will hear it when I came up with it. And that's where these guys come in and uh, GNT might just have an idea say, oh, maybe we'll play the bass higher or we'll hit this tone and that can completely change the sound of the song. Yep. That makes sense. What would you say? You agree? I okay, came through. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it came together. It was a collaboration, but obviously I came with the main format and the, mm -hmm. the idea for this one because I had a specific idea in mind with what we chatted about, pretty much. That's cool. Are you excited for this single? Really? Yeah. 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 I think it's great because of the vocal, the, the whole idea of it's not something I've really attempted before vocally. The timing of it and things like that are very different to what you'd normally expect to hear. Yes, okay. So that's going to be cool. Look forward to hearing it. Mm. Really do. So hopefully it'll have the same success as your previous releases. Yeah. More, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. But uh, there you go. Um, talking of success, I mean, your fan base seems to get bigger with every gig and tour that you, that you undertake. What would you put this down to? And both of you, please feel free to give your own ideas as to why. Hmm. Difficult question, appreciate. And, uh, but I wouldn't put it down to one thing specific. I guess if I was to put it down to one thing spe specifically, uh, it would probably be the fact that we don't sound like a lot of other bands. I'd like to think anyway, and a lot of people will tell us that you, you can kind of get a fix for some bands other other places. So if you hear like a... You hear like a, a metal band that sounds like other metal bands that we were all into, and we're influenced by all these bands as much as anybody. But with us, with Taurus, like you can only really get that fix with listening to Taurus. Love it or hate it, I think the reason that it grows is because um, people are, oh, I can only really listen to that kind of sound by going to see that band. Or at least that's what I think. What do you reckon? That's a generally hard question, because we don't do anything special on stage or anything like that to make people want to see us. Or. But from my experience of seeing you guys, you, you do have an affinity with the fans that sort of is different to a lot of bands I do so. Mm. Well, we talk to them whether they like it or not. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's sort of hit and miss sometimes, but... Yeah, I think that but, but it, the communication... And we do that communication on stage as well. So if you'd notice, um, we don't have spectacles in terms of we don't use big backdrops and flames and things like that. Um, but the way that we communicate with the fans on the stage is very similar to how we would communicate them off the stage because we don't change as people. No. Uh, people, I, I see a lot of bands that wear makeup and things like that and that's good, that's what they do and that's great for them. But because we are who we are and we're, we're, we're comfortable with that, our music is to represent who we are. We go on the stage, we're still those people. Uh, and I think that that's what, you're just regular people but you're doing something uh, extraordinary as ordinary okay. people, maybe. I don't know. I mean, do you think genuine music fans are, are after just that music that they don't necessarily need all the the fireworks and, and the backdrops of a spectacular show? Or do you think there's a place for that? Hmm. Place for it, definitely. I think it obviously each artist uh, brings to life their vision, brings to life their passion. Yeah, and the uh, further down the line you go, the more extravagant you can, you can make the stage shows, backdrops, fireworks, such, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, we may go into that territory when it feels right for the music. And I think all you do is do the best with what you can with what you have. And I think at the moment, our, our show, and, and the reason that, to answer your question, the reason I think people are interested in that, because we interact with them on stage. You know, I, I look at them in the eyes and I communicate with them. I'm singing to these people who have come out to, to hear that. Uh, and that's it, really, I think. I think that's a fair comment. Hmm. Uh, and the people do react to you. Yeah. It, it's obvious by the growing numbers of fans that you're gaining from places you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. You mentioned to me in passing 
Manchester, you never played there, but you had an army of fans there. Mm. So, yeah, it's weird when you get something right. Yeah, and that's great. And, you know, I guess there's no real way to answer it, but I think that those things that we've talked about, I think that's generally it. Just about being passionate, being direct, uh, and not changing yourself, not having this stupid rock star persona about going on stage and being somebody different. Because I'm not, and he's not, and Tom's not. We're the same people, but we just uh, play from there, from the heart, I think. Guys, you've managed to secure a, a coveted slot at Hammerfest 2017 through much hard work, it has to be said. Can you tell us what this means to the band? I guess it's a kind of coming out of that regional uh, area, isn't it? Like, you know, kind of looking at moving forward and, and as I said earlier, you know, sort of the, the end of the beginning. Um, and a lot of work goes into that because we obviously spoke to people and trying to get this whole Hammerfest working. And like Lisa, for example, trying to get this whole Hammerfest thing working. And one of the things that we were trying to do is, all right, so we knew we had a, needed a video. We knew that we needed um, the EPK sort of, and all these kinds of things that we were working on. Um, of course, one of the things with the industry, as we chatted about before, it's like, right, you know you've got to do things, but you don't want to compromise your artistry. So you've got to compromise certain hard work to make sure you don't compromise the artistry because that's something that we... Uh, won't compromise on but you know you've got to put some work into those things so we did and it worked out and it's good and that's it just shows that if you've got a plan you follow your plan through uh, you can get there just by doing it yourself um, without the need for other things you know um, but we're really really proud to be playing with some of the best bands of the genre it's going to be amazing and hopefully it's just the start of much bigger things from there I'd say hmm. so Given that, do you see that Hammerfest 2017 is a springboard to much bigger and better things for tourists in the future? Do you think this is the way to go for the band now? Aim high. Definitely. Uh, I think it's always been in like, our agenda, hasn't it? It's always sort of go as far as we can with it. Yeah, we've been given a chance to play with some really big bands on that lineup. Bands that we all sort of kind of listened to growing up in a way, like Napalm Death, in particular, yeah. you know? Especially being from Birmingham too, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and then we look at obviously what we want to do f from the future there, and we want to look at where we want to go from there. Um, we've always wanted to take it as far as it can go and grow the band, you know, because obviously the band it goes like a birthing process, like a like a person, where it starts something small and it grows and grows and grows. And we're we're like maybe even in the adolescent stage, but we're no, nowhere near like the full thing yet. And we want to continue growing that to make sure that we can reach our potential, I think, as musicians and artists. Uh, and success, hopefully, continue getting more and more people involved in what we do. Can't say fairer than that. On that note, Mark Malone, GMT, and George to his mates. Thanks for coming in again, guys. And as I say, enjoy the beers. Thanks for having us, mate. I appreciate it. House. See you again in a bit. As ever. And I look forward to the beer at Hammerfest that you guys are going to buy me. Half a Carling. Not with Carling. your name on it. Not Carling. <laughs> Carlsberg. Carlsberg. Hop yeah. goblin or nothing. <laughs> okay. Okay. My I'll final laugh. You're on. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Cheers, guys. From Tesco. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. God gang suicide is upon me. The God gang suicide is on me. The God gang Suicide is upon me Go! The God gang suicide